Alright, welcome back you guys. Um, this will be part 3 of the 72 C10 Air Ride install. And on the last part, part 2, I showed you guys how I cupped the control arms. And uh, part 3 now, what I'm doing right here is you can kind of see in the back how I've cut the cups down in the back. Just because like I mentioned in the previous video, as the bag travels it's going to want to so we're going to want to arch sort of this way with this cup trimmed down it's not it's going to allow plenty of room for the bag to travel and not even think about getting close because uh you know even though it was probably fine to begin with i just want to be damn certain that nothing is going to rub on these bags and uh everything's just going to work fine this one's all done and uh took some 220 sandpaper and just sanded the lips of these really smooth and just sanded everything really smooth and uh, pretty much next step is to pop these ball joints out and replace them so uh, my buddy Nick's on his way over with the uh, ball joint press tool because I do not have one so once he gets here we're gonna pop these lower ball joints out so stick around okay so here's the passenger side and lower ball joint and this is why we are replacing it it's not supposed to do that so it's getting cut out all right so Nick's here with the ball joint press tool you may remember him from our classic hit uh, the PT9K video but we got the one ball joint already pressed out uh, we didn't show you how we did it because it was the first one and we didn't want to look like idiots. So uh, we'll show you guys uh, how to get the second one out. Stay tuned. Okay, so we've got the tool all set up on the passenger side lower control arm. Kind of see what we got going on here. It's got these cups and then these puck things that kind of just keep everything in line with it, each other. And then you just start twerking on this and cross your fingers and hope for the best. So, got our impact. Let's see if we can get this sucker to pop. Oh. Perhaps I should frickin' tighten it first. Yeah, it usually helps. Yeah. I forgot I had to back it off when I took the other one off. So. Yeah, it was just binding. Here we go. Here, see if you can get a video and show them straight in and watch that push out. All she wrote. Just like that. Just like that. All we gotta do is get some nude ball joints and press them in. Alright, thanks to Nick, we've got our uh, lower ball joints pressed out. This one's freaking wasted. This is why you want to replace your ball joints after a period of time so they just get pretty much blown out and wasted well anyway had to order these because no one around here has them in stock which is to be expected with this old C10 so moving on to the upper ball joints and to remove the uh, upper ball joints it's actually a little easier than doing the lowers because you don't need that press I guess it's all about perception of what's ever easier to you. You know, I, to me, just grinding the heads off of these rivets and knocking the damn ball joint off is easier, but to some, you know, that might be a big pain in the ass. But anyway, that's what's got to be done. Got to grind these four factory rivets on, and then the new ones, when they show up, you bolt them in place of what used to be the rivets. So if you're uh, ever out and looking at like a used truck for sale or whatever, and uh, it, you know it's got a shit ton of miles on it. It's an older truck. You can look at the uh, rivets here on the ball joints, and if they're if they're riveted on there, then it's safe to say that those ball joints have never been replaced. So I think you know I don't need to necessarily remove the control arm to get it, these off, but <clears throat> I think it'd just be easier just to clamp this sucker in the vise and just start grinding away. So in that case, it's a matter of taking those two bolts off. I believe those are three quarter, but yeah, two three quarter nuts. And then you got the back behind there, there's typically a, a stack of shims. And that is what 
you uh, get your camber alignment with is they shim it inward and they shim it outward depending on where your wheels need to be and your ride height and stuff which is you know your camber alignment on an air ride vehicle is kind of redundant because your ride height is out you know your your hut the height of the truck or the car is always changing so pretty much the best way to get your alignment is to you know take it into the shop the alignment shop and set it at what you would like to be your pretty much all-time ride height and just base it off of that because you know the second you drop it your alignment's going to be off again you know there is certain companies that make like a nice steering kit like a no toe steering steering kit and uh you know some people have made you know, there's companies that make really nice tubular control arms and shit, and they've taken into consideration all the geometry and this and that. And they either make them longer or shorter based on whatever needs to correct the uh, the camber when it's, you know, when the suspension is a foot lower than it was designed to be at. So, moving on, going to rip this control arm off and get these out. All right, so here we go, getting these suckers out of here. Shout out for this impact. thing works awesome. Granted, I've had this control arm on and off about 15 times. To get, this, to get this thing off initially, I had to use the torch and the impact and the freaking breaker bar. And yeah, it's just a matter of theoretically removing those bolts and it should come right off. It's not always that easy, but like I said, I've had this control arm on and off like 15 times already. So there's the stack O shims I was referring to. And based on the amount of shims, you know, determines how far or inward your uh, upper control arm is to adjust your uh, camber on these vehicles. So, you know, a lot of older cars, same exact shit. So, it's all relevant. Anyway, now that we got this sucker free, bring it on over here to our little tool cart. Make some room for it because we're getting kind of crowded. Got our angle grinder friend, and then we go to town. So I'll be back. All right, y'all, so I got the first upper ball joint removed, and let's just call that mission fucking easier said than done. You know, initially, like I said, you just grind the rivets off this thing, and the ball joint, yeah, it should pop right out, but these little remaining factory rivets that are wedged in there after 45 years, man, it, I had to do a lot of shit to get them fucking things out. Pretty much had to heat it. Heat it and beat it. But anyway, they're out. So, one more coming right up. Alrighty, so I've got both sides, upper ball joints removed. And gosh, that, what a pain in the ass that was. You know, I thought the lower ones were going to be a nightmare. Not so much. These uppers were a fucking pain in the ass. Excuse my cursing, but these are uh, factory rivets, man. They were just in there. I had to pretty much grind them flush with the frickin' top of the control arm and I had to put the torch on and heat them until they were pretty much scorching red and just beat the hell out of them and finally I was able to get them to pop through this side. I kind of gnawed into the control arm a little bit but I don't think it's gonna really hurt it too much. But yeah, now uh, this bit's already 11 o'clock at night so I'm just taking five minutes cleaning up shit, organizing my sh Organizing my tools and stuff, picking up, uh, you know, reeling up cords and whatnot. That way, next time when I come out here, it's like a nice fresh start. Don't gotta worry about parts scattered everywhere. And where did I put this? Where did I put that? Everything's just nice and organized. So I uh, recommend doing that for anyone working on stuff like this because you know, nothing sucks worse or gets more frustrating than working in a freaking disaster pigsty area. You know, some people like, I'll just call it organized chaos. They just have parts flung everywhere, tripping over this and that, having to move everything around. I can't do that, so. Anyway, when the upper ball joints come in, we're going to go ahead and rip them suckers in, and then it's bag time. So stick around for that. Um, it'll, like I said, I had to order the ball joints, so it'll be a couple days, which, you know, I'm kind of, Kind of needing a break from this thing. I've been kind of just going steady on this thing. Everyone needs a break every now and again, so. Bag cups are in, upper bag mounts are in. Just haven't tightened them up because I'd like to get everything painted before all that. 
new ball joints are on their way and uh, what else? Like I said, I just got to come up with a shock that'll work and we'll be on from there, so stick around. So in the meantime, while I'm waiting for my ball joints to show up, I decided it would be a good time to paint everything. So I painted the spindles, upper bag mounts, came in here, painted all this. And you know, all this stuff look nice and nice and brand newish. And uh, what else did I paint? Upper control arm, the other spindle, and both the lower control arms. So when the ball joints show up, all I literally have to do is press the ball joints in and put everything back together, which will be nice because you know I'm getting kind of antsy with this thing. I've been kind of a uh, obsessing on it for the past week or so um, I haven't even really left my garage to be honest with you but you know just doing the steps man it's coming along so hopefully the ball joints will be here tomorrow and hopefully this paint and everything's dry by tomorrow and we go ahead and start putting this sucker back together plumbing the bags and all that fun stuff so stay tuned y'all Okay, you guys, so right now I'm uh, in the process of plumbing the uh, airbags to install. And what I like to do before I even install them is rig up one of these little Schrader valve fittings, piece of tube, whatever line you plan on using, and just test for leaks before you install the bag into the truck. See, because if I were to just go ahead and install that into the truck and not do that leak test, this bag would leak like a motherfucker. So, <clears throat> it's better to test for leaks before you put everything together. That way, you know, let's say I just, I didn't test for leaks and I just went ahead and put this bag in the truck. This bag would leak like a motherfucker and I'd have to pretty much take the whole freaking front suspension apart again just to get the bag out and, you know, correct the leak. So, it's always a good idea to check for leaks before you go ahead and uh, permanently install everything. Especially the bags and stuff that, you know, it's difficult to get to. So, uh, a little bit of soapy water. It's not Windex, it's just soapy water. And if you got leaks, you will see bubbles, which is no good. Okay, you guys, so I pretty much just unthreaded the fitting, uh, cleaned off all the old thread sealant tape. Cleaned everything up, cleaned the threads up, and re-taped it with some thread sealant tape, and reinstalled it, tightened it up, and no more bubbles. So I'd say we caught that leak. Now we can go ahead and install the bag. Alright you guys, so I got everything painted, got all my ball joints installed, got the new ball joints, lowers and uppers, lowers pressed in, uppers bolted in. I didn't replace the tie rods yet, because they still had some life left in them. Um, just pretty much going back and bolting everything back together now. Um, I'd like to get my rotors turned and some new pads while I'm at it and maybe paint the calipers while I have everything apart. But for the most part, it's all uh, ready to go back together. Got the bags put in. You know, you see seen uh, as we were going along just everything I've been doing and pretty much just waiting for the ball joints and everything was the only thing holding me back from getting this thing back and up all put together so now that I got my ball joints in and everything's painted you know it's just a matter of putting it together and kinda got it half ass plumbed now but you'll, I'll show you guys that one in the next uh, next segment or whatever but for the most part yeah late night just assembling it putting everything back together but I'm gonna wait till tomorrow take my rotors in have my rotors turned that way I know all my rotors and everything are good to go so uh, yeah stay tuned Alright you guys, so I finally got everything put back together, got the bags all in there, everything painted, got the brakes back on, threw the wheels back on, and for now I just got the hat, the front kind of half-ass plumbed with a T-fitting in the middle, going to just this uh, Schrader valve here so I can just fill it up with a, a, you know, just a typical air chuck, but uh, it's sitting on the bags right now, so, so far so good, let's see how low this sucker will go though.
Hell yeah. As you can see, the front's sitting pretty low, and it's not even bottomed out all the way because when I half-ass plumbed it, that T-fitting under the cross member is getting stuck under there, so it'll actually go down another inch. But for the meantime, it's looking right. The only thing I still really have to do is put the shocks on the front, which, you know, as you would guess, they had to order them, so, and it's Labor Day weekend, so I probably won't see those till next week, so. Um, in the meantime, it, the front is pretty much done. Just got to, uh, like I said, put the shocks on, and then when it comes time to officially plumb it, you know, plumb and run the lines and valves and, every, you know, everything the way they need to be. But uh, for the most part, man, the front is done. Now it's time to go ahead and work on the rear. As you can see, the rear is still sitting pretty high. That thing's going to sit right. Hell yeah, that thing's gonna sit right. Once I get the shocks and everything done and all that good stuff, it's gonna sit right. So, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, pretty much as far as the front end goes, like I said, just the shocks and everything, all that shit's pretty much done. So, once the shocks show up, put those on, and then once I get the rear done, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, like really plumb the system, make run all the lines the way they need to be, and keep them away from the exhaust but that'll be a whole nother video um so yeah i guess like i said as far as the front goes that's pretty much it for the front you know i'm sure i skipped a couple of steps like putting the uh ball joints back in but that's pretty self-explanatory and easy to do so uh you guys get the idea of what's going on like i said it'll go another inch lower once i replumb it and get that fitting out of there because right now it's sitting on top of a fitting that's like that's all sitting on top of a fitting that rhymes but anyway that is how you bag out the front of a 72 c10 now let's hope cross our fingers and hope that the rear goes uh, smoother let's just say i hope it goes smoother because you know like i said in the beginning of the video the front was kind of a uh, you know, I thought it was just going to be a matter of cups and bags and I'd be laying on the ground. Who knew was I wrong? So, uh, anyone wanting to make one of these old trucks lay on the ground, you got a little bit of work cut out for you. But, it can be done very easily. It just takes some time and some grinding. And another thing I'd like to mention, because I don't think I mentioned it at all through any of these videos, this whole build, I'm pretty much using, you know, basic hand tools an angle grinder and my welder I don't have you know I have a plasma cutter but I you know I'm not too uh, you know I'm not too experienced with it so I wasn't trying to cut my only set of control arms out with a plasma cutter so everything like all the brackets and all that shit I've had to make just basic angle grinder and welder and just like uh, Tony Angelo on Hot Rod Garage says you give a talented dude a angle grinder and a welder and he can make you some pretty cool shit so that's kind of the pre uh, premise I was going off of. If I can do it in my garage, you can do it in your garage. So, anyone that has one of these old C10s and you're thinking about bagging the front, that's what you gotta do. So, uh, let me uh, know what you guys think. I appreciate you guys watching. Thumbs up if you like, thumbs down if you're a hater. And uh, it's time to spin this sucker around and get going on the rear. So, let's go ahead and get going. See you guys.